Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at the indirect tax diagram. And the purpose of this video is to focus on actually drawing the diagram. How do you do it? Because there's, there's many ways to go about getting organizing information in your mind in IB economics. And one really effective way is to master how to draw the graphs. Because if you know how to draw the graph, then you know what stories need to be told not just in the analysis, but also in the evaluation portion of your answers, say for a paper one question. So mastering the graphs is a way of making sure you have all of the information you need to know to be successful. In order to understand the graphs, of course, you've got to understand the discourse. So most of the time people attack understanding a diagram or a graph through you know, reading and understanding the discourse. But once you know the discourse, I think the best way to remember it is to master the diagram. So let's take a look. And if you've seen my other videos, I have something called the Rule of Eleven. And it's, I, it's, it's proven itself to be exceptionally helpful for students. And I tell students, look, in almost every microeconomic situation, you're going to start with the same graph. And it's this graph right here. It is a, it is a very simple demand and supply diagram with a P1, Q1. It has 11 aspects to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. You need those 11 parts of, of a diagram in microeconomics to begin. And so even before you know, or like you get into the question itself, you see microeconomics tax diagram, boom, rule of 11, go at it, draw this graph. And then you know that you're starting with a correct diagram in which to manipulate after the event. So in this case, the event is going to be an indirect tax. An indirect tax is a tax, as you remember, placed by the government on producers. So the government is taxing producers. That's why it's indirect. Because the tax is not paid directly to the government by consumers, like say an income tax, but rather through the producers. So when you go to the store and you buy a pack of cigarettes and you, you pay an extra dollar in tax, that dollar is being paid to the store. But then the store, usually at the end of every month, must then pass that tax per box of cigarettes on to the government. So the, the, the indirect portion, the portion of it is that the producers are actually paying the tax to the, uh, to the government. Okay, but, but as we will see, the total tax burden will be shared between consumers and producers. So here's the rule of 11. We started there. We know it's a tax diagram. Uh, we know it's about cigarettes. Here's the market for cigarettes. We're ready to go. So what's going to happen? Well, any indirect tax will result in an increase in the cost of the factors of production for producers. And anytime things get more expensive in the marketplace, suppliers are going to cut their supply as a result of the increased cost. Because now, every box of cigarettes that is sold in the marketplace actually costs the producers more. So the, 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 the result of the indirect tax is always going to be a shift of the supply curve, S1, inward by the amount of the tax. Okay, And the way that we represent that is we take... We take this original equilibrium point and we go up, right, the amount of the tax, which in this case we're going to say is $1, okay? All right, now, the indirect tax of $1 on in each pack of cigarettes, let's say they're trying to build a, a fund in order to help um, education programs, okay? The tax, because of an additional cost to produce, is an additional tax to the cost of the producer, so the supply curve is going to shift inward by the amount of the tax. We've covered that. But as you can see, they won't be able to pass all of the tax on to the consumers. And we know this to be true, because if you take a look here, you know, in, in, ideally, right, ideally, the producers would say, hey, all right, perfect. We're going to take $1, we're going to add it to, the, to P1, and we're going to end up with a price up here of P3. Yeah, well, guess what? What does this supply and demand graph tell us? The supply and demand graph tells us that at the P3 price level, only this quantity, right, is going to be sold in the marketplace because this is Q3 down here. So that's the only amount of, 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 of cigarettes that are actually going to be sold in the marketplace, and the producers are going to end up with what? They're going to end up with a surplus. This is excess supply. So how do they get rid of a surplus? Drop price, right? 
So in the end, what's going to happen is a new equilibrium price combination will be, will be set right here at P2 and the quantity of Q2. Okay, so let's clean that up a little bit. And you can see that what that would look like is something like this. Okay, after the, cons after the producers realize they can't pass all of that tax on to, on to the... To the, to the consumers because they can't charge this price here of $1, right? There's a new equilibrium um, price quantity combination, which is P2Q2. Okay, from there now, there are several, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different stories that are told on this graph. And this is a great way, especially if you have a real social, social science mind, you know, uh, your mind sees things in stories, which is sort of the social scientist ec economist. Seeing stories in here is a really, really helpful way of, of taking, a, taking, a, uh, taking a look at diagrams. So where do you start? Okay, well, where did we start? In, in the beginning, I'll tell you where we started. We started with P1Q1, right? P1Q1 was a price-quantity combination of that. And what was that? Well, P1Q1, before the tax, is the producer pre-tax revenue. P1Q1 is a, is a, is a, um, it's a, this is a revenue box. This tells the story. Before the tax, this is what producers were earning. P ta P1 times Q1. This whole, this whole area of this whole box is where, was their revenue. Okay. What about producer revenue post-tax? Well, if you take a look post-tax, Wait a second, what happened? We've got to represent this with blue. Now, I'm going to show you where it is first. It's right here. Okay, This box right here is post-tax producer revenue. Why is it that small? Well, here's why. Because even though producers, the, the market equilibrium price went from P1 to Q1. So you would think that P2, Q2 would be the revenue for the producers, which this is representative of the total, maybe, sales of cigarettes. P1 times Q1 would be maybe like, you know, all of the money that's going across the, t the desk at the checkout line. But guess what? For every pack of cigarettes at the quantity Q2, the producer has to pay a dollar to the government. So the distance between Z and point X, or one dollar per pack of cigarettes, is a cut in revenue. This, this isn't actual revenue that gets to stay in the producer's pocket. No. P3, Q2, this box right here is the revenue box post-tax. So we can see automatically, right? We can see right away that the producer revenue has gone down. Now, that should have cued you in on something else. What does this represent? Well, this whole box from P2, right, to Z to P3 this entire box right here, of course, represents something else, which is the total government tax revenue. This box right here is rep that is the total of that right there is the con the government tax revenue. That is how much money the government will make as a result of this tax. Okay, so. Great. Now, next little story. What other stories are in here? Hey, we got three more stories to come inside this, inside this uh, diagram here. And the next one is the consumer tax burden. And it's important to realize what this is. What does that mean? Well, it, the burden, consumer tax burden, it's the amount of the tax that the consumers are burdened with. So how do we figure that out? Well, you always start with P1, right? The consumers last week went in and bought a pack of cigarettes for the price of P1. This week, after the tax, what do they have to pay? Well, check it out. They have to pay P2. So the change for the consumers in terms of how much it costs to buy a pack of cigarettes goes from P1 to P2. And so this box right here represents the portion of the tax. Right, This is the whole tax. Right, The green box here is the whole government revenue. But the question here is what part of that tax are the consumers going to pay? And I'm going to tell you, it's from P1 up to P2, and it's that portion of the box. So the orange section of this box is the consumer tax burden.
Cool. What's left? Well, it's pretty obvious, right? Look at this box right here. What's this box? There are two more stories here. Well, this portion, this box right here, is the portion of this $1 tax that the producers are going to pay. So, if you think about it, they used to get, producers used to get P1. But now, P1 price, right? But now, as a result of this tax, they're only getting P3. So the, this portion right here, P1 to P3, represents the amount of the tax that the producers are going to pay. Beautiful. Look at that. All right. We're getting through the stories. Now, last section. What is up with total loss of welfare? Well, remember I've used this analogy throughout this course um, about the government being like parents. And parents have a tendency to get involved in perfect equilibrium things and mess it up. <laughs> you know, you're going out with your friends and you got, you got some new friends and you're hanging out with them and it's all great and you've got this perfect equilibrium point. You've gotten past this point where, you know, things are awkward and you're having fun together and all of a sudden your parents get involved and like, oh no, you can't go out this weekend. We're doing something else as a family. And you're like, ah, what? What do you mean? No, I, I, I want to go out with my friends. And they're saying, no, sorry, we're intervening in the marketplace for your happiness. <laughs> for your friends, and we, we are going to make you spend less time <laughs> with them, okay, as a result. So the quantity that you can, the quantity of time you can spend with your friends just went from Q1 to Q2. Uh, okay, so what happens to, how do you represent this here? Well, this is the loss of happiness, welfare, um, that you would experience if you could no longer spend time with your friends, if, assuming you really wanted to, and you had to spend it with your family. Okay, a silly side story, but kind of on purpose to help you remember. This, this triangle right here represents total welfare loss. It's also referred to oftentimes as dead weight loss. And this is the total loss of welfare to society as a result of the tax. Okay, And what that means is that the government's gotten involved. And remember, P1Q1 is the perfect allocation of resources in the marketplace. And anytime there's government intervention and you mess with that, something's got to give. And what's going to give here is the area of this triangle um, that you see that I'm pointing to right here. Okay, So this black line right here is total welfare loss. Okay, look at all of those stories. It's super cool, right? Not only do we have a $1 tax and we're talking about a pack of smokes and cig on a pack of cigarettes, but look at all of the look at all the stories you get to tell now in your evaluation and or in your analysis and then all of the outcomes and different different storylines you can choose. You can talk about consumers, you can talk about producers, you can talk about the government, you can talk about the loss of revenue from for producers. Um, and then the cool part is that you're the economist. And that's a beautiful thing about the IB is it invites you into the conversation to come up with a solution. On average, every government needs to tax things. And cigarettes are a good thing to tax because nobody really feels bad for smokers. Right. There's no like political action committee who's saying, no, we have the right to smoke. It's good for us. No, cigarettes are terrible. So if you're going to tax something, tax cigarettes, not only is it politically a good idea, but also, you know, from your other studies and elasticity, or as we get the elasticity, they're going to choose to tax this, right, as a result of the fact that it's fairly inelastic. I mean, smokers will pay, addicted smokers will pay pretty much anything for a pack of cigarettes, right, at least in my experience in life. So that's a good thing to tax. And who's going to complain that there are fewer smokers in the world? And who's going to complain that unemployment went down in the you know, cigarette market or for cigarette manufacturers? You could argue that maybe they should be banned outright. Okay. So in any event, you see that there are a ton of stories that you can tell um, regarding uh, this using this tax diagram. And I wanted you to take a look at this so that you could see how many different angles you can take and also so that you can feel empowered if you can if you can get this this graph how to make it and the logic of it in your mind then you will remember the information you need for a proper evaluation and analysis and i would suggest to you that that process that i just went through producer tax revenue pre post government tax consumer tax burden producer tax burden total welfare this is the logical path to go through this graph so that you can create a good analysis all right last thing i just kind of want to 
So here's a cleaned up version of that same graph, right? And what I did is I went in and I put these, these coordinates for you because one thing you can't do in an IB exam is use colors because they won't show up. So you need to figure out ways of, um, of showing where these boxes are. So producer tax revenue, right? P1, that's pre-tax revenue, P1, Q1. Producer post-tax, right? P3, Q2, P3, Q2. You could also say P3, Z, Q2, 0 if you wanted. The government tax revenue, um, that is this, this box here, right? If I switch over here to green, right? That is this, the area of this whole thing. My green didn't come out on my diagram very well, right? Okay, so that is the, 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 con that is the total government tax revenue. So P2, X, Z, P3, P2, X, Z, P3, the area of that box. And then for the consumer tax burden, you got P1 up to P2, over to X, down the Y is covered there, but that's a Y underneath there. And then producer tax revenue, okay, P1, um, Y, Z, and I made a mistake there. This should be P3. It's this whole area right here, okay? So I should add that in there. That's going to be red. Just so you have a totally accurate, this needs to say over here, P, P, 3. Okay? And then, once you have your producer tax burden, then you talk about total welfare loss, and that's a triangle of X, D, Z. Okay? So the area of this whole triangle right there is the dead weight loss. Okay? So I hope you found this video helpful. I tried to go through it as quickly as possible. Once you have the ideas and the discourse in your mind for taxes, my suggestion is to get this graph burned in your mind and all of the different stories. And if you do that, then it'll be easy to write the analysis and evaluation. All right, folks, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and I'll talk to you in a bit.